We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation will be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Mental Health Awareness right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. My guest is Rachel Handeras. We're going to be talking about caregiving, but caregiving for people on the spectrum. And what does that mean, the autistic spectrum? How do we actually provide care and how do we even recognize they have autism? Um, Unlike other conditions where it's obvious straight away and you know what you're dealing with of autism, it doesn't always reveal itself straight up and it can reveal itself in so many different ways and so therefore be misdiagnosed also in so many different ways and a lot of the time just being a difficult child where really they're on the spectrum there and they just learn differently and they're differently abled and we need to approach them differently and if we know better we can do better so this is uh, Rachel's uh, uh, Rachel's journey right now she's starting a business to be that caregiver to help people understand it discovering that your child has autism can be daunting she says everyone seems to have an opinion the parents have a difficult task of deciding who to listen to and finding out where to go for information she is there to help people understand exactly what it is uh, they need to to do because they feel overwhelmed and they're confused and she walks um, the attendees through giving their child the best support and accessibly accessing available sources and having the confidence to advocate for their child. She's a founder of the Spectrum Caregivers, an organization that assists caregivers in providing optimum care for autistic children. She's a, uh, Her personal journey began when she faced the challenges of raising two autistic children herself with very different needs. Though her her nine-year journey, she, through her nine-year journey, she became a local subject matter expert and referred to her children's health care providers to other parents in need. Dedicated to empowering other caregivers by sharing her knowledge and expertise, she aims to empower caregivers, which can be parents or could be external caregivers, who may be struggling to provide the best support. Navigating available resources, questioning the, uh, the question of their ability to set their children up for success, because believe me, I've interviewed people with autism and the incredibly gifted many of them um so please do not sell them short so let us find out more about actually understanding what autism is as i said i've interviewed people who are parents of autistic children and they've talked about the horrors and they've also talked about how the doctors told them basically to put them in an institution and go and have another kid which was horrific Um, but also I've interviewed autistic people who are incredibly gifted and one of the things that I've discovered is how profoundly focused they are on something they love how creative they are uh, but how selective they are of their arena and whom they mix with, which quite honestly, I think is a great template for all of us. So welcome to the show, Han. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I've uh, watched a few of your other episodes and and I love what you're doing. I'm right back at you, love, right back at you. You know, when you talk about autism and when you talk about anything that is differently abled, I don't like to say disabled, differently abled, there's a judgment that comes up or the, the, um, repellent that comes up and it's like there isn't any single one of us in life that doesn't face some form of challenge there is no normal we are all unique people facing different things in life but those that have these differently able challenges like autism or down syndrome or other things it's we have got to learn how they interact how what they're saying you know what their needs are and not impose upon them to try and be like us. I think that's number one, don't you? Oh, yes. Um, with with my children, uh, in my experience, I've I've had to tell people, you know, I, I have to speak Nikoese. <laughs> I have to learn his language because just because 
he's labeled nonverbal doesn't mean he's not communicating. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, if, if a child is deaf or, or is blind, we don't hold it against them. So if they're nonverbal, why do we hold it against them? Right. So there are different yeah. ways. And of course, sign language is, is one. But also I had a woman whose uh, daughter um, became a paraplegic due to um, a, a tainted vaccine. Mm -hmm. And she'd literally speak with her eyelashes, her eyes, you know, blink and, and respond that way. And her mother would have to ask the right questions and the daughter would blink back. But if we take the time out, and especially out of our ego and look into what the child needs, then it's just not as stressful as we put it upon ourselves, is it? Yes, that's correct. Um, I was I was so blessed um, shortly after we got our first son's diagnosis. Um, I started working at one of the state supported living centers where they care for the people who have the most profound disabilities. And so I was around that environment and around the professionals who are able to help guide me, give mm -hmm. me their expert advice. Um, and then by the time our second son started showing symptoms, we were ahead of the game. We, we were more prepared and that made a huge difference. Is that common for um, if, to have two autistic children in a family? Is that rare? Uh, no, actually, there are statistics that show it is more common. Um, there's there's more and more research that I've been reading about advances in uh, the genetics research that's showing correlations between different neurodevelopmental disorders, uh, the spectrum between ADHD, dyslexia, um, autism. I mean, autism used to be... Um, just labeled as schizophrenia. Yeah. Um, but thinking back to, you know, previous times, you know, no one wanted to have a label. No one mm. wanted to be seen as different, non-conforming. Uh, no one wanted to have a pre-existing condition. <laughs> We've gotten past that. <laughs> yes. Well, so it, maybe <laughs> in some <yeah>. aspects. <laughs> in some aspects. But but we're making progress, both both in knowledge, awareness, and acceptance. Mm. And and that's the big thing because it it is just kind of the diversity of the human spectrum in and of itself. Uh, we, we're all different. We're meant to be different. It takes a village. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses, and that's how we come together to support each other and accomplish the great things that we have accomplished. Yes, yeah, you know, the big word you said there was acceptance. Um, you know, whether you're perceived as normal, having a normal life or not, you know, what I, um, what I speak to a great deal and if you've listened to my shows, you know, it's probably, probably in every show, is societal's expectation of what you should be. And everybody is so busy trying to fit in and live up to and, and perceive that's happiness that we're all selling ourselves short because really it's about looking at the gift that you are and how to use that gift in order to benefit each other. And if we're so busy chasing an illusion we're losing ourselves. We're not connecting with ourselves. And from my experience, uh, people who are differently abled are more in tuned with who they are. But they also have um, shorter boundaries and probably more hypersensitive to the environment and people around them. I fully understand that because then I'm an empath and I've got to be very careful what I'm around. But I find that the when we look at them as playing up, is that they're, they're, they're feeling a particular vibration or frequency that's going on around them that is very disruptive to their entire well-being. And we're just not tuned into that yet. So again, is, is if we paid more attention to how they're interacting, how they're tuning in, how they're communicating, I think it would be a lesson to all of us. Yes, yes. Um... And that's one thing as as we get older, even in the professional spaces with um, experts in a particular field, the further you get, you forget what it was like in the beginning. Uh, parents will complain that their child acts like it's the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Well, it is. They, mm -hmm. they haven't lived that long and 
they're learning to express their feelings, our first son didn't speak until three and a half. And so we encourage him to to say anything and everything. And we just try to teach him manners with mm -hmm. that and um, situational appropriateness yes. <laughs> as needed. Um, but but we don't want to stifle him from mm. from expressing his emotions. We we can tell him that the emotions are valid while the behavior might need some work. <laughs> I like that. You know, the, you, the how you're feeling is very valid, but what you're going to do with that feeling. Um, I have a two-year-old grandson who is very bright, uh, but because of COVID, he's been around adults more than children. And even though he goes to daycare three days a week, he's not hugely interactive. And he's had a few behavioral issues of not sharing or somebody trying to come and take something from him and him not reacting in a very positive way. And it's like, is it COVID? Is it that he's shy with around other kids, but not shy around adults? And it's, again, where we impose upon him, well, he's a monster zone, so he should be at home, but maybe he's not. <sighs> yes, no, um... I, I've found both my children are very focused. Uh, they like to do what they like to do. They mm -hmm. know what they want and they yes. go for it. That's yes. leadership skills. Yes. Um, you know, there, there are views, perspectives that you can shift mm -hmm. to be able to see things because anything can be either a virtue or a vice, depending on the, the variables involved. So what you want to do is expand your perspective and be able to see how you can help guide them in making that more on the virtue side of things. Right. You know, you you, you talked about uh, dyslexia before. Um, um, I, I interviewed somebody a couple of weeks ago who had severe uh, dyslexia to the point she was a mirror writer. You literally had to take a mirror up to her writing to read it because she wrote entirely backwards. She went on to start, I think it was in Philadelphia, the first... Um, differently abled school you know program for children with disabilities that the school just didn't know what to do and she said well i don't quite know what to do but let's work it out <laughs> you know and so she started that program but because she already had her own challenges and had faced those challenges being through the ridicule being through you know the you, you're different you should do it this way um, i mean look at how many left handers i don't know up to what era that stopped but my mother the person i live with who's 90 you know the ruler on the hands if they were left-handed mm -hmm. right and it's my, my mother experienced that. right yeah so it's the, <laughs> you know you're like hello you know we've hopefully come a long way since then but it's i find people who face challenges um as i say i'm dyslectic as well not that severity but i don't give me a form i can't fill it out properly i will fill everything out in the wrong place um and when I write, I kind of speak like Yoda and <laughs> do it the other way around. But uh, you look at Winston Churchill, right? And you look at um, uh, the Virgin owner, Richard Branson, and you look at a few other people and they all had challenges. But I think in a lot of ways, it opens up a creativity to see things in a different way. Uh, and understand things from a different point of view, that the quote, quote, normal way of doing things is so linear and so straightforward mm -hmm. that very often we don't have that ability to see things all encompassing because we're so busy on the straight line. That's true. A, a lot of people, myself included, uh, we get so focused on our idea, what mm. we're trying to do. We we like have blinders on and that can be good for certain tasks yes. uh, when you need to prioritize things. But you still have to be able to open up those blinders mm -hmm. and take a look around every now and then, especially when you're interacting with other people. Um, and that and that's one thing that we teach our children is you know, you have to consider what this other person is thinking and feeling because, you know, every person is different. They say you've met one person on the autism spectrum, you've met one person on the autism spectrum. It's really the same for humanity in general. Mm, We're yes. all very individual people. And we, I mean, that that's evolution. We're not meant to all be the same. Otherwise, <laughs> we'll be humanoids. 
rather right? than human beings, right? And, and you know, our fingertips, you know, it makes us unique because none of them are the same, but the same goes with our, our frequency. And that's how people can do remote healing. And that's how people can feel people around the world. It's that you just tune into that frequency. We are very unique beings and we're not meant to be the humanoids. We're meant to be, you know, these spiritual beings having a human experience. And that is to experience uh, and, you know, not the trauma, not the suffering. Suffering is a choice, you know, because we could choose to suffer in it or do something about it. Um, but it is, I think a great deal of it is what's been imposed upon us as to what we should do. And you are not this and you're not that unless you do. And whether we're looking at people who are differently abled or we're looking at people who just think differently, um, it is um, it's an imposition that is just totally out to lunch and quite honestly needs to stop. But I actually feel that as we see more and more of uh, our children on the autistic spectrum or even on Down syndrome or many other aspects, that they're actually here to reprogram us and teach us. Yes, yes. We learn so much from our mm -hmm. children. Um, in fact, my husband and I actually learned we were on the spectrum ourselves through learning about our children and recognizing a lot of similar yeah. personality traits. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, you know, there wasn't the same knowledge and, and acceptance of mental health back then. Everyone wanted to avoid having a label. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, some people might say we're going overboard with labels, but it is a way to be able to identify with a community yeah. and better understand yourself. And that's that's what it, it's about is tuning in to your unique frequency mm -hmm. um, so that you can attain that self-actualization and really allow yourself to be yourself. That was something I struggled with all my mm -hmm. life was trying to fit in the way other people expected me to. It was like I was the round peg in the square hole yes. my whole yes. lot of life <laughs> up until I had my kids. And then everything was about them. And I started learning about autism. And I started learning so much about it that our, our providers, uh, therapists, pediatricians, um, the other nonprofits I would go to in the area were like, how do you know so much about mm. this? I didn't even know that. Can mm -hmm. we refer you to these other parents? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but that's what I was saying. This is, you know, in I'm celebrating my 10th anniversary of my own network and I've been doing podcasting now for 11 years. And the one of the consistent things that I have seen is people's revelation of who they are. Uh, you know, going through trials and tribulations, some people have gone from extreme horrors, um, but made the choice to go through it into their own healing and to become today. But whatever they went through is what they become the teacher of, of helping yeah. people to get through. So I think that when we're given these challenges, it isn't to punish us, you know, nobody, God isn't punishing you. God's giving you, this is your tool to learn and how to use so that you can help other people with the same challenge navigate through it as well. So I think that it's it's one of the consistent threads that I've seen all the way through it. So for you to understand your children and to be there for other people, having it to yourself um, and really immersing yourself into what your children needed has now become your gift to share with others. Yes, um, I've I've always been a helper. Um, I just feel like I was meant to be kind of a spiritual guide mm -hmm. um, in, in a sense. And I've met other people similarly uh, that, you know, have their own niche with it. And I, I help people do through many different things throughout my life. But by the time I had my kids, everything became about them. Yeah. And then, you know, this is just how how life guided me and so i'm i'm happy i'm able to help other people because i mean parenting autistic children has its unique features but so does parenting any child 
every yes. parenting experience <laughs> is going to have joys and challenges and gray hairs <laughs> i had yes. three gray hairs yes <laughs> they're going to put you through it you know and uh, whatever they are and um and you know we've got to realize that it doesn't matter how many books you you read this is one job that you go into that there is no piece of paper you know except to say you are mother that to to you know um like a degree or a diploma or anything it's one of the my daughter when she had her son said to me mom how did you do it with three and I said I don't know I just did it you're so busy in the now and what the now needs what they need in the now is that you're just doing it and you're kind of learning as you go and yes sometimes you trip up and you make mistakes that's life right and you go okay do it differently next time or do it differently in a now but it's it, it, so much of parenting is guttural, is instinctual, is spiritual. And then yeah. if we tune into that, it will help na us navigate through better. Yes, I completely agree. Um, there, There's so many times even I feel kind of that parental guilt of, mm -hmm. you know, striving for perfection, whatever that means. Yes. Um, and... <laughs> A happy child you know, is perfection. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my, my children are healthy. Mm -hmm. My children are happy. Mm -hmm. And they are making progress. Right. Uh, I like to say that um, uh, normally people say children have milestones. Mm -hmm. My children have millimeter stones. Right. And that's, you know, kind of yes. tuning into what I learned about project management and the Japanese um kaizen method of just being able to break things down into smaller pieces mm -hmm. so that it's not one big overwhelming thing yeah. and instead you've got these little incremental steps that don't seem as overwhelming so you just take one step at a time <laughs> they're more pivotal i think because you know constantly looking for those milestones and yet people are tripping over themselves to try and get there but if we celebrate literally i mean i say this to people who are starting on their journey in life you're not going to get up and run the fact that you've stood up is the first feat of that you've won now one foot in front of the other and that one foot in front of the other and being aware aware of where you are how you feel what you've learned what what's there for you is so important. Society has told us that we've got to take leaps. And in taking the leaps, we're missing the signs, we're missing the tools, we're missing the skills that we need in that millimeter, in those one step at a time. Yes. Um, I'm, I am a fan of motivational and inspirational speakers. Um, and I would even include you in that, um, though I think you're probably more more level headed than most of them. <laughs> Thank you. But but you know that you you do have to keep a perspective mm -hmm. on that. A lot of times, they're they're advertising as the one in a million. You know, results may yeah. vary. Yes. Type type a stuff. Pie in the sky. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like this is the ideal, and mm. it's not a bad ideal, but it's not good to try to just compare that as if it's the standard <laughs> well I think if you've listened to any of my shows you know I often talk about comparison and how deadly it is and yeah. you know you don't compare an apple to an orange they're both fruit uh, it's a preference you may like them both I and mean, you may feel I prefer that one today over that one is is the apple going to be offended <laughs> that you ate the orange you know and this is the thing we have we've become so sensitive it, which is our ego talking, which is our fear and our insecurity talking. And when you talk, you know, I've used to be part of network. I had a friend who was a, a networking guru who go one to an, another and another. And it'd be, you know, there's MLM. Sorry, you've got to come in. You've got to see this. It's the next best thing. And I'd go in and it'd be the same old template. Ra, 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 ra. And you get everybody worked up and then they come in. Yes, it, but what do I do? <laughs> 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 right there's there's all the the hype yes but not much content no um yes well how do i get there but nobody actually oh we, there was one guy 
that said, you go and knock on someone's door and you walk in and you don't leave until they sign up. I would call the police. Oh. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. I, I struggled through a few sales jobs when I was uh, younger and just starting out. And it was so hard for me because I just if I don't believe in it, I, I can't do I, it. No, it's no. like I've I've got that level of integrity yes. that yes. it's just. If I don't it, actually it can't come out of your mouth, can it? it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, this is what I'm supposed to say, mm. but, you know, depending on your situation, it may or may not yeah. actually be best. And so also, that... we've, be we've become smarter as buyers today in, you know, what is the sales pitch as to, you know, what people really believe in. And I always say, it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you don't believe it, they're not going to believe it. And if they can't buy you, they're not going to buy from you. And that goes the same with what you're doing as a caregiver. You know, well, you're telling me I can do this and that. Well, where do you get your information? But when they know it's coming from the heart, it's coming from the experience, it's coming because you want to help other people not have to go through the Grand Canyon, just the potholes, right? Then, then it becomes, uh, oh, she really means it. She really cares. And this is the person to talk to. But we want the authenticity, don't we? Yes. Um, li lived experience is mm. becoming so wonderfully celebrated. Um, a degree. What I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, it's a degree from yes. the School of Hard Knocks. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I've been for a few of those schools. <laughs> <laughs> got a few of those degrees <laughs> yes and and that kind of relates back to what you were saying earlier it's like autism does not come with a manual no, There's no instruction manual no. to parenting or any of that mm -hmm. you can hear all these different perspectives on it but you have to still kind of decide what it is that fits your unique situation and be open to that changing because like every frequency it will change at times yes so you have to be flexible <laughs> and you know the the you know I have three children and it's um there were some commonalities between them but each one of them were totally different and oh, you know yeah. that's actually you know like Forrest Gump life's a box of chocolates you know every chocolate yep. is different why are you judging the whole chocolate just to be the same it's not a bar you know it, and that's the beauty of it is that, you know, I once said to my children, each of you have got an aspect of me inside of you. And so they'll come back to me with, no wonder you're so screwed up, mum, if you've got all of us inside of you. <laughs> but that's the, the beauty of it is they take that, whatever that aspect is, a bit of you and a bit of the, the father, but they create it and it becomes their own through their own hard knocks, through their own life experience, through their own passions and convictions. And to say that an autistic child can't have those same milestones, those same experiences, uh, you know, out to lunch. Because again, I've interviewed them. They have been novelists. They've been graphic artists. They've been DJs. They've been business people. It all depends on the, on the particular degree of what they are. But I also knew somebody whose daughter um, was severe because she had other things as well. She had OCD and she had something else. She had to have the computer, the radio and the TV on all at once. She was pacing back and forward. They had to be careful what she ate because she didn't know how to stop. And also she could turn violent. So that wasn't just autism. That was a, you know, a, obviously medical and proper help is needed on that beyond what a parent can give. But I don't. I don't know, you will know more than I will. Is that rarer than, you know, than a child on the spectrum that can fend for themselves? The, I wouldn't know the exact statistics on that, but from my experience, there usually is an overlap of uh, what they say, comorbidities, mm -hmm. just, you know, multiple conditions. Yes. Um, and, and again, that's part of, you know, us being able to learn more and identify things separately. And they're, they're moving further along with, with the research on, on that. And so they're trying to isolate things so that you can treat them a little differently if you need to, but there is some overlap between yeah. them. That's why it can be hard to distinguish between autism or ADHD for mm -hmm. some kids. Um, but then also some kids might have both. And yes. so, you know, there's some strategies 
that will work for some children, but not for others, uh, just like with, with any child. Yes. And it's just putting more tools in your toolbox uh, so that you, you're you more, more prepared when something does come up. You can be like, oh, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you find that, you know, even with your two children, that one may be more visual, one may be more auditory, you know, and that is the way they communicate. Um, I was a very sickly child uh, with severe asthma and, and go into a point where I couldn't breathe. So lack of oxygen into the brain. So they just think brain damage. So, you know, uh, I didn't finish school. But when I was in school, the teachers that took the time to have a conversation with me um, and talked me through things, then I got it. But just turn to page such and such, read that and do it. I never could get it. Um, but do you find that your children, both of them, learn in a different way? They do, yes. Um, and with with our older son, um, he is kind of more in his head. Mm -hmm. um, so he likes to be doing something specific uh, lately he's been really into Minecraft and mm -hmm. so he he'll draw the characters and his his art is just astounding yes and then he's also learned to do programming skills through mm -hmm. learning how to mod it mm -hmm. and then he's been learning um 3d modeling skills learning how to build the characters himself on the online programs and he's only nine years old but oh, he's learning yes. these advanced skills because yes. that's his interest and that's the thing is you want to find what they're interested in, and then use that as a foundation mm -hmm. for anything else. One of the first things we were able to teach him was counting. If mm -hmm. he was upset, um, I would just be, just count with me. And I'd just hold him, and we'd just count, and eventually it would help calm him down. And and he, he became hyperlexic. He learned to read really early, mm -hmm. and he just really focused on letters and numbers, and we just used that to build um and and so then that's how we got him into minecraft is he could start building his letters and his numbers in there uh now while our younger son nico uh he's seven now and he's still technically nonverbal, but he keeps making little bits of progress uh so he he has some clipped words uh kind of scripts from some of the shows he watches he, mm -hmm. he still doesn't communicate functionally like you know i want a glass of milk or something like that but he has learned to start gesturing more mm. but he has much more of a physical um child he is just literally the one climbing the walls <laughs> the cat trees anything ah! and everything <laughs> i mean we, we've got crowns drawings all the way up to the ceiling in some spots because mm -hmm. he's just like all over the place but but he's a very active um uh, and and I think part of that comes to his his trouble with speech. Mm. Um, I'm not entirely sure because they can't test him until he he gets uh, more communicative. But I believe he has apraxia of speech, which is kind of like dyslexia, mm -hmm. but instead of for reading, it's mm. for your brain and talking that that connection. And so it's like he he can struggle and figure out how to say certain things, but it's still a struggle for him. And, and that's the thing is, you know, they've, they've got strengths. They're, they're obviously intelligent. They figure things out. He figured out every child lock we put on everything. <laughs> He's a little Houdini escape <laughs> artist, <laughs> but but he 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 still just he's a happy little guy mm -hmm. and he just decides what he wants to do and he does it and he learns and he advances and he's building skills. Um, and so that's the thing that we focus on is, you know, he may not fit this picture yeah. of what we thought, um, you know, kind of what we expected from from the norm. Um but he's he's our son. We love mm. him, and he's making progress. And we're teaching him, and hopefully, he does learn to become independent. That's the goal: is you know that our children can be 
independent and happy and self-supportive so they don't have to rely on these systems that are overburdened and underfunded. Um, the, the wait list for, for yes. some of these services has just gone up exponentially. When my children were young and I got them on some of these uh, Medicaid waiver lists, it was a 10-year wait. Now it's up to 25 years. Oh, my God. Ridiculous. Yes. I mean, these children are already going to have a gap in service between when they age out of the system. Right. And there's only so many nonprofits that are able to help in the interim. Yes. But there are some good ones. We've There there are some very good ones. Yeah. Yeah. um, I want to go through the ones that you know about, but I also want to uh, introduce you to Victoria Curry. Um. She had a horrific thing where her husband beat her up 300 times. She literally has wires and metal in her body, uh, kind of deformed now, and just recently had to have a hand off. And she was pregnant at the time, too, so it affected the child. And uh, But her now husband, who was a vet and, and then was a canine uh, cop, they're breeding dogs for people for people with stress who have been of abuse or having, you know, um, uh, any of these spectrums because the animal understands that child so well and the the ability to read what uh, if they can't articulate you know so soothing to them and a kind of an like, expression an extension of that expression that it really does help quite considerably but the reason they started breeding these dogs is because the wait list was so long and you know what I have found even with veterans um they came back and the services they needed to even just be able to come back and fit in in, in life. Um, they had to create themselves because the VA only has so much and a lot of them don't even know what the VA offers and it's different from state to state. Um, so they created their own and, and that's hats off to them. You know, Hats off to any of you that see the problem and you don't wait for the government to do it because you know that you'll be waiting until hell freezes over and you get up and go do something about it because it is because of people like you that others can have some sustainability in life that that is one of dignity and being heard. So thank you to all of you for what you're doing there. But you're in uh, where are you? you're in Texas, so in the states, um, there are organizations that have stepped up, and they are there to help. But as you said, there's waiting lists all over the place. But there's also this wonderful network called motherhood, or mm-hmm. parenthood, of literally talking to other parents who have children on the spectrum, whatever level, whatever degree, of communicating and sharing. And that is so impactful, isn't it? Oh, yes. Um, I've I've encountered so many supportive uh, groups um, on Facebook, um, uh, even even on LinkedIn, uh, some professional sided uh, for for diversity in general. Mm. And and there are specific like women's groups Mm -hmm. um, as well uh, to, to identify some of the unique struggles we have. Uh, but there, there's so many different um, things between local communities, mm-hmm. um, the, the kind of the, the micro level at the city level, the meso level at the state level, and the, mm. the macro level at the, the federal level. Um, I mean, oh my goodness. So with the federal level, there's Social Security. Yeah. Our children get the SSI, um, but... I have had to fight tooth and nail. I have to I have to use most of my uh, paid time off from my nine to five job um, to go in and correct their errors. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, there's just there's so many things because they're understaffed. Yes. And, uh, that you know they, you know, um, the. The people that are working in there really do want to help people, but they're they're so overworked. Um, and they're not really given the kind of the tools and the skills and the support they need in order to support you. No, I, w- I was going in there with printed out volumes of their their code, their book, saying this is the section that says this and so this is what we should be getting, but this is what you're giving us. Mm-hmm. And they're like, 
let me go talk to my yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so somebody who doesn't know what the codes are or this or that you know just that's not their forte um having an advocate that does speak out for them you know, and this is why you've stepped into kind of supporting the caregivers now because there's so much that they don't know that they need to know but they don't need to know it all at once because it's too much as as it comes up is knowing that that knowledge is available yes yes that's that's a big thing is um it's easy to get overwhelmed with mm. all the information kind of going down the rabbit holes yeah. of Google. And, um, you know, I've done that myself many times, but, uh, and it's, it's good to have that knowledge, but it's also good to be able to moderate it um, so that you don't get completely overwhelmed or buried under it. Um, Self-care is important. And yes. part of that is, you know, not overwhelming yourself. It's kind of like when you have a symptom and you start Googling it and, yeah. oh my God, I might have cancer. <laughs> exactly. <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> Leprosy. <laughs> yes, I know. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's, there's so many different things, yeah. but um, ha having that advice from someone who's already kind of been through a lot of it yeah. is, is invaluable because they can help pace you and and tell you that it's going to be okay mm -hmm. you know this is where you are let's establish that that's kind of my system I've got three main steps in my system is first identify mm -hmm. identify where you are where you want to be kind of all the all the details within there and then the second step is connect mm -hmm. uh, learn how to connect with yourself with your child with the different services available and create a plan to do that at a moderate, sustainable pace. Mm -hmm. um, because there's there's a lot to it. I mean, a lot of stuff will bounce you back and forth between par uh, providers and insurance and just all over the place. It's like a pinball game. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And, and when it, you know, when you've got a child that already takes up a lot of your time, you know, the all of these extra things and it's, um, you know, one of the biggest problem with caregiver, you know, caregivers, if you're a parent of a child with, who's differently able, is you're so burnt out and you feel so alone. And in your case, you know, you have your husband's support, but and so many people I've I've interviewed, the husband's left because they didn't know how to deal with it and they're dealing with it on their own. And so, you know, the, it was just, and of course, you know, for some of them that I've interviewed, the social media wasn't around. Now, social media, you know, gets a bad rap, but got to remember it's an algorithm. What you feed it is what's going to feed you back. And, but it's also incredible for, you know, like my daughter has a, a, a newborn with Down syndrome and the, the amount of platforms that are out there where they're supporting each other uh, and, you know, what, what do I do? Is this normal? Or, you know, just being there for someone when, it, it, again, it's one of those things that there's such a spectrum of Down syndrome and until it reveals itself, you don't know. And there's so many health issues with it that, you know, you're not quite sure. So everybody's always on guard. I know they are, you know, he's five or six weeks old now and it, and they're on guard with everything. So it's good to have those backups where you feel I can go into that community. I can express the way I feel. I'm not going to be judged on it. There's going to be somebody who's dealt with that or somebody knows somebody who's dealt with that or, and somebody who can refer them to someone. But the biggest thing is not feeling alone. Yes. Yes, that's the the depression, the anxiety, mm. especially if you already struggle with those things. Uh, I I have myself, mm -hmm. um, and but like you said, once once you have kids, you're just in it. You can't stop. No. It doesn't no. stop. So you have to keep going. Yeah. But There's no one going to take a day alone, off today, no. <laughs> you know? Yeah, if, if, you, if you feel alone and if you yeah. are alone, then it's that much harder yeah. because you you need that self-care to be able to take a break. Um, our, our younger son is very, he's nonverbal, mm -hmm. but he never shuts up. Right, he's exactly. a very loud 
person. Uh -huh. um, he's a happy, loud person, but he's a very loud person. And there are times when I need to be able to just step away and have some quiet. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and and being able to have someone to help is is invaluable. I mean, it's it's good to have these different mom groups or um, there's the Autistic Self Advocacy mm -hmm. Network that's that's been wonderful for uh, helping older people who weren't diagnosed come together mm -hmm. um, and either seek a diagnosis or not. Um, a lot of the community respects self-diagnose mm -hmm. um, because it's it's a challenge to to get diagnosed. Yes. Um, it's it's expensive it's time consuming going through the doctors and that they don't have as much research about how to diagnose it in adults um they're making advances on that but it is harder um and they do have to still relate back to well how were things when you were a child yes because that's that's what they're looking for is what were those early symptoms that we can identify and so you you just, you have to have access to so many different resources. And of course, you know, my generation, because I'm 68, it was just, we were considered slow or, you know, or dumb. Yeah. Um, inability to learn. Um, just hope they make a good marriage. They'll never amount to anything. And there was, you know, there was also shame around anything. If your child didn't succeed at something, then there was there was shame on the parents of what did you do wrong right yeah. and or if you had a child that had obvious um different labeledness then it, it was they felt sorry for you but they didn't really want to have anything to do with you because they didn't know what to do for you yes yes and 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 we've experienced that still today um We'll, we'll, we'll try to go to some community events and there'll be a mix of people that are more accepting, understanding, mm -hmm. and aware. But then there'll be people who have no idea and have some of these um, more traditional values uh, that, you know, they're just not as aware and they, they have the blinders on of this is how things should be, this is how people should be. Uh, but we, we have to help them kind of open their yes. eyes a little bit and see that, okay, so he's he's not going to sit perfectly quiet mm -hmm. during your presentation, but I am going to work with him to on that. But he still should have the experience of being allowed in. Yes. I mean, they... The, the days of hiding kids in the basement. Oh, I, mean, I know. It's just... Oh. It's yeah. just horrible to think mm. of some of the things people have have had to go yeah. through in the past and even today. Mm -hmm. um, in certain but, cultures, definitely. Yes, mm. uh, but that's that's part of of the movement of just more acceptance of diversity in general. Um, you know, there's there's neurodiversity and there's neurodivergence, mm -hmm. and you know, neurodiversity is just trying to be. Uh, accepting of, of everyone in their own unique representations of themselves. Um, and then neurodivergence is more saying we've got this baseline, kind of like you've got the bell curve mm -hmm. in education, and then these are the people that fall outside that bell curve. <laughs> Did you listen so, to that show, Dr. Joanne White, Neurodivergent? <gasps> Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but look what she did. I mean, she was a mirror writer, right? She she did everything kind of wrong, but she ended up, you know, starting programs in schools for children with learning disabilities because nobody else knew what to do. And she said, well, I don't really know what to do, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn from the kids. And she started that whole system there. And I think that's the thing when when somebody has faced the challenge they are so much more equipped of how to help others face the challenge don't give the challenge to somebody that has no idea what it is yes and and that's also part of our spiritual journey mm -hmm. is you know they say you you 
life keeps presenting you with similar problems because you haven't learned the yeah. full lesson yet. It's like a spiral. You're <laughs> you're learning a little bit more, getting a little closer. You're learning what you need to learn at the time. Yes. And then you yes. kind of master that and then on to the next. You know, this whole thing that we need to have it all at once. No. Yes, no, no. We don't retain and, and it. That that's part of our society being yeah. a little bit more inundated with these ideas of instant gratification yes. and over consumption. Oh. Um you Opulence, know have, entitlement, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and perfecting the perfect image online and everything. It's which like, is no. photoshopped, yes. 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 No. We we are on a journey and it's about the journey, not the destination, because the destination for everyone ends up the same. <laughs> and it's it's what you do on the journey. I kind of refer to it as the book of life. And each chapter is is, a, is another aspect of your life. And that chapter may come to an end, but that just means that whatever you learned in that chapter is now written in the next chapter on the next adventure. And if we could look at all of this as an adventure, and you know, I really think today, you know, we look at we talk about our indigo children, and I think much of our indigo children are autistic children, our children with quote quote learning disabilities because they are more spiritually in tuned children and not societally dictated or, you know, doctrined into. And they, they know that how society is conducted is really one of ego, uh, of fear, of insecurity. And very often, although they may feel insecure in certain areas, like your older son, you know, uh, how many autistic children have gone into computer programming or like this one girl, she's written three books. She's graphic to every one of them. And it's it's all kind of through kind of gameplay in her mind. Right. And she's done incredibly well. Massive support from her mother, Janet Wesley, um, who's been there, whose husband left and who's been there the whole time for her. But it's a. Uh, the, the message is it doesn't matter if your child is is challenged in learning or isn't challenged in learning. Let's stop putting the burden of, quote, quote, perfection, imposed illusional perfection on them. And let's start looking at the gift of who they are. Now, this show should have gone under our gift to children as well, not just <laughs> mental health awareness, because all of these children, if we look at them, no matter what stage then or what, you know, whether they're nonverbal, that he finds another way to communicate, right? It's, it's, there is no box, there is no parameters for him. It's that he's going to express himself in whichever way he expresses himself. Whereas your other one is so utterly laser focused and so detailed and intricate and probably isn't as outgoing, right? But that's the right. way he expresses himself. And neither one of them is wrong. They're just different. And who are we to impose what is right and wrong? Yes, that's that that's invaluable to give children that gift of the freedom to be themselves and to explore and discover. Um, you know, I my my parents were very caring, but they also had more traditional ideals mm. of you know this is how life is this is kind of what you need to do in this order and um and it was really really hard for me because i i was interested in so many different things but every time i would get interested in something it would be like okay well how will you make a career out of that yeah and i'm like i'm seven years old can't i just be <laughs> interested in it <laughs> And, and part of that comes from um, they want you to have security, right? They yes. want to know that you, you know, you can look after yourself. But also part of it is I want to see, you know, how many, and especially my um, ex-husband is um, Chinese. And, and part of that, you know, in their cultures, a lawyer, doctor, you know, somebody important. And only one out of the eight children in his family became the neurosurgeon. Everybody else was an entrepreneur, Right. So you can't deny the child what they are. And by trying to push them and dictate them into what you want them to be is only creating a dysfunctional adult. Yes. Yes. Um, that that was part of my struggles was, mm. you know, trying to be that round peg and that yep. square hole. Um, 
and until I finally was able to to find my own way and accept that I could have my own way. Uh, so there's a lot of deprogramming in, yes. in growing up. I mean, every everyone experiences things between societal peer, family pressure, one way or the other, even individual pressure. Um, but being able to, um, I, I really found inspiration through the Maslow's hierarchy of needs mm, and being able that. to. Oh my God, it's so wonderful. It's it's a pyramid um, to where your base level is uh, your your physiological needs. Do you have shelter? Do you have food mm. and water? And then it goes up to um, higher levels that are that are separated out. Like, uh, do you do you have uh, stability and security? Do you have communication connection the community um and you have to have all these steps to get up to self-actualization mm -hmm. and and becoming self-actualized it's it's like enlightenment it's not yeah. a, a destination no. it's a continual process yes getting getting closer to, to an awareness and attunement <laughs> right it's yeah. when the attunement because everything else is in place i'm a true colors coach you know the the four key personalities Myers and Briggs, yeah. And and when I took that, it, it was an aha moment for me because I could separate the spiritual being to the human being and the the traits in which we perceive and interact in, and the four key uh, very dominant traits that there are. And I recognized who I was. I also recognized what my family was. And I thought now I know why they never got me, because we're so far from each other that for them to get me this sky blue wind uh airy type person that you know couldn't really put her feet on the ground to somebody whose feet are on the ground and likes to do things in order you know I was just a scatterbrain but no I was 100% spirit going with the flow and so it helped me identify the human um aspects of how we perceive life and in doing so um my program then became a who you are, where you are, and where you can be to so in my yeah. coaching. And that help people actually understand their own traits. I can't be that person that everybody wants me to be because this is who I am. This is where I'm at. And where I am meant to be, I need to allow myself to go. Yeah. Now, when you look at autistic children that are backed and supported, they're already following that path because there is no other path for them other than that path. Yes. And that, that is just, um, it, it's just such an important point for people to, to be able to realize and accept and celebrate. Yes. Um, what, you know, once again, it takes a village. We, mm -hmm. we need, art i mean covid taught us you know mm -hmm. with everyone having to shelter in place i mean who did we turn to we turned to artists to help yes. entertain us and sustain us um when we couldn't be as social as we wanted to in person mm -hmm. um a, a lot of uh society is is imbalanced in how mm. we value people Oof. um yes and <laughs> <laughs> way out of balance <laughs> yes um but what once you can can get past some of that early programming of of how things should be and be able to both accept yourself and then other people get past that ego that that's when life really kind of opens up for you. Mm. Um, uh, there, there was one speaker who talked about the river of life, mm -hmm. the river of life keeps flowing. Yes. Um, and, and it's going to flow how it flows. You yes. can't control it. Nope. Um, but you can learn to ride with it. But you know, if you're constantly trying to like go upstream, mm -hmm. then it's, it's going to be harder for you. <laughs> and if you allow somebody to come along and damn it, so the flow isn't in place, that stagnation backfires on you uh, because we are meant to be in flow. I mean, just look at the logics of our body. The oxygen in our body needs to flow. Our blood needs to flow. The energy in our body needs to flow. Our thoughts need to flow. Our spirit needs to flow. And any time that we block that through fear, 
and fear can manifest as ego or entitlement or in any of those aspects, then what we're doing is a disservice to our own flow. And, you know, I've said this over and over again, if you're upset or angry and you crunch, right, nothing's flowing. The deep breaths and allow everything to flow within your body, to be still and to be present, brings you the clarity you need in that moment. And that calmness and that that calmness lies in flow. Yes, yes. I, I try to exemplify that for my children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's just kind of relating to so many different things between um, even like, you know, the, the trouble people have with kids with ADHD, where mm -hmm. they're hyperactive, they can't sit still. They weren't meant to sit still. No. They're supposed to be active. Exactly. They're to be running around and Eight doing hours muscles. sitting at a desk. Oh, come on. No one's supposed uh, to do that. No. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's not how our bodies are made. And we're becoming so unhealthy because mm. of these unrealistic expectations society is putting on us. And we're we're fighting to break free of that in our own ways. And some people are becoming successful mm -hmm. and we're trying to help other people yeah. become successful. It's like we choose to homeschool our kids because while we know there are a lot of people in the system that are loving and caring and supportive, there's also a lot of over-institutionalization yes. that's not as helpful and not the way we want our children to be programmed um you've hit so a huge we... point there you've hit a huge <laughs> point there because you know you look at a child before they go to school and they are full of expression they're full of wonderment they're full of exploration right and you know the, there's a dozen different things they could possibly be and then we go and put them in school and it's all about conformity it's all about, you know, your your intellig intelligence is measured by this linear. You've got to walk the straight line. Do not step outside of the box. There is no individualism here. And your you, hair has to be like this. Yeah. Your clothes have to yeah. be like this. Yes. I mean, every aspect. Yes. It yes. was a prison for me yes. growing up. I, um, I've just written my memoir and that's in there. <laughs> it was horrific. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I mean, I literally counted down the days to graduation yeah. like a prison sentence. Uh, I exempted between... myself once I hit 16. I could legally leave school. My mother was in England. I was in South Africa and I just exempted myself. Um, my principal even came to see me and said, and I said, no, there's nothing you can teach me that I can't learn through life. I've missed so much schooling due to illness anyway. I could not learn in the way that you taught me. And it is now for me to learn through life. Yes. Now, I'm not and saying that education is bad. Not at no, all. No. And, and education, but we've got to actually look at our own child individually of how are they learning. And if, we, if they are in school in the system, how much liberation are you allowing them at home to express what they've learned? You know, empowering them to be the individual and not become the humanoid. Yes. And, and even giving them the freedom of choice. Yes. Because if you're dictating that they spend this amount of time doing this, this mm -hmm. amount of time doing this, this amount of time doing this, they never have the freedom to explore. And then they become these adults that don't know how to self-initiate. and Or play. And, yes. Um, yeah. And play is so vital. Absolutely. I mean, that was one thing between me and my husband. You know, we we grew up similarly but differently enough that we're kind of uh we're a good balance for each mm -hmm. other um so he taught me how to kind of relax mm -hmm. and play more and and I taught him how to kind of be a little bit more focused on getting things done <laughs> <laughs> the good yin and yang yeah exactly yes Yes. Um, I mean, but, you know, that's the thing is that you don't know what, what kind of child you're going to have. You don't know, you know, if things come up. I mean, if your child suddenly got cancer, do you abandon it? So if you if you have a child that you suddenly discover has ADD, I had ADD son and I had a, a, um, ADD and OCD daughter. And uh, she's 40 now. She's traveled around the world. She keeps winning awards because she's a mixologist and she is a butterfly. She's a free spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Never married for her. It was all about that extension of life. And I have a younger daughter who, because of so many high fevers she had when she was young, ended up with some neuro 
something happening in the frontal lobe that was longer to develop. But she's gone on to get her degree. She works now with people with brain injuries. She's the one that's had, given me two grandchildren and has the Down syndrome child. When you look at it, it's um, that child has been given a gift of the right parent. Both parents, both of them are 100% hands on. And it's yeah. like, okay, this child has this label but it's my child i'm going to love him and i'm going to support him in any which way i need to do and i think if we if we could look at our children that way and not look at what their differences are but look at the heart and the soul and the spirit of what they are and nurture that they will become what they need to become yes they yes. don't need our dictation stop interfering Yes. <laughs> what what they need is is a guide. Yes. And, and that's the thing with coaching is, mm. you know, I, I don't want to tell people what to do. I just want to help frame what is and, mm. and provide some additional perspective. And so that they can kind of see clearer through the fog of the overabundance of information and a lot of it conflicting and yes. all the worry and the guilt about, well, what's the right thing to do? Should we homeschool? Should we put them in school? Should we do a private school? Should we do ABA or is ABA abusive? You know, yeah. all these different things within the community itself that are highly controversial. Um, and it, it can be just overwhelming and being able to, to, be like I've been there and you know this is what I've learned this is what I've, I, I've experienced this is what I see from your situation and so this is the advice that yeah. I can give um that I think will help you um and and that's that's a guide that's that's yes a coach, you know? and you, you, in... you you're going to listen to someone more who's been there and done that it, because it resonates you're, you're speaking the language of what they're going through Right. So yeah. it you're not somebody who's just learnt from a book and I well, I read online or I read in a book. I think you should do this. It's this is what I have done that's worked for me. Yes. And and you know, not not just that, but this is also what I've seen has worked for other yes. people. Um, having so much experience with, with other families, uh, with so many different professionals. Uh, working in the state sport living center was was just huge mm. for for seeing a wide variety, especially of some of the um, more disabled yeah. people. Because while it's a label, it may not necessarily be a disability. Right, autism in and of itself is considered a disability. But that doesn't mean everyone is actually disabled by it. Exactly, they're differently abled. Yes, and that's all. and and that that's also a point of contention within the community is those labels of high or low functioning mm -hmm. because it's like I would be considered high functioning, but at the same time that doesn't mean I don't struggle with things. Exactly, it just might not be as obvious. Right, <laughs> and I was considered low functioning. Um, and it's you know even when I started doing this, it was a. You've got to do it this way. You've got to do it that way. And I said, I can't do it any other way than my way. And if my way is right or wrong, that's up to the listener yeah. or the people I interview to decide um, because I can only do it the way I understand in doing it. And I can evolve and I can learn and I can adjust and pivot. Yes, because that's what one does in life. As you learn to do something better, you do it. All right. And that this whole thing of, Something's got to be perfect before you start it, or it's got to meet this agenda, or it's got to do this and that. And it's like you are now dictating an outcome before you've even started something. And, you know, how many people fail because of that expectation instead of like, I have a vision, you know, like you, your son, he's he got this in his head and he knows how to draw it and he knows how to take that vision out and put it out there on the computer or, or however he does it. And the satisfaction of being able to extract from the head to see something in front of you. But he didn't dictate, he allowed. Yes, it, it's all about finding that frequency. Yes. And and that's the thing is we, we're all operating at different frequencies and those frequencies are ever adjusting. Yeah. And it's that's part of the river of life. Is yes. We, we find 
our frequency and those around us who are in a similar frequency that that's the thing of you know some yeah, vibe people tribe are in, yes yes that's the thing of some people are in your life for for a lifetime some for a yes season and some for a reason you yes know, it's you know there's there's just all these different things and and it doesn't make any one thing particularly right or wrong good or bad it's it's just the way it is and people need to be more open to the variables of life yes <laughs> and and self being ever evolving and changing um that that's actually the third part of my system so the first was identify the second was connect the third i have is evaluate so mm. acronym of ice because yes you always want to be evaluating is this working is this working for me is mm -hmm. this working for my child is this working for our family you know what what changes do we do we want what changes do we need and how can we get there so it's it's a loop you know you, yeah you continually like just identify between all the different levels of yourself your child your your surroundings you connect in in the ways that you need to or want to and then you you continually evaluate and and adjust course um there's there's the um saying that Uh, I believe it's like an airplane flying like halfway across the world, like from the furthest point to the furthest point. Um, if it's off by even one degree, you know, at first you're not going to notice it. Yes. But eventually it's going to go way off course. And right. so you, you just constantly need to recalibrate and be able to, you know, flow with that frequency change as needed. Pay attention. Yes. You know, pay attention. And and the thing is, I think one thing I want people to get out of the vocabulary is failure. Failure yeah. is when you give up, you give in and you say you can't do it anymore. And you know, you're going to have those days where the frustration or the overwhelmness makes you feel you can't go on. And that's where you need to call for help, do some self-care, recalibrate, re-energize, and then you come back and go, okay, that didn't work. Let's try something different and always be willing to, to recalibrate, to readjust, to pivot to something else. And you may find that, oh, this really works and it works for a while. Ah, it's not working anymore. We've got to pivot. Maybe you go back to this other system and see if that works. Don't get frustrated or don't think any less of yourself because it didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Exactly. It's the trying and the for every, you know, evolving of pivoting and, and doing That is, um, that's where the triumph comes in and where you talked about the one step in front of the other. You know, it's celebrate every step. Yeah. Stop looking at the leaps. Celebrate every step. Because when you look at every step triumphantly, then you really can actually see how far you're going. Yes. And, and not getting locked into, like, it's good to have a goal, Yeah, but you, you want to make sure that goal can be flexible for reality. And realistic. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so you, you might adjust your goal because yeah. no journey is a straight, straight line. And there's, who wants it to be? be how pivots. boring. How boring. <laughs> right? right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're just going to go on a highway of life and never go off the beaten track, you're losing out so much. Because life is about exploration. And I think, you know, it doesn't matter whether people are differently able or not. So many people have got societal disability now because they're so busy buying into this boulder dash of I'm only popular if I'm six figures, if I'm this, if I've got these many likes and I look like this and I'm important like that. And they realize how empty it is. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how popular you are, how enriched. And how abundant are you are from the within? That's where yeah. the e-commerce is, within. And the journey to find themselves is much, much harder when you're older. It's longer than if we support our children in discovering who they are and growing within themselves right from the beginning yeah. instead of having to undo it a few years down the road. Oh, my goodness. That makes me remember the saying of... Um... It is easier to train up a child than to correct an adult. Oh um, boy, yeah. <laughs> but but that doesn't mean adults aren't in need of of assistance. I know. And no. you know that's that's a big thing. Is uh, we, we've got so many of the older generations that are are learning that 
you know, they fit in some of these newer labels yes. and it's their choice whether or not they want to uh, incorporate that into themselves or not, or if they want to make adjustments for it or, or, or whatnot. But it's, it's a tool that you can use because knowledge is power. How you and use wisdom that is knowledge. even more past. Yes. Oh, how yes. you use that knowledge. But how you know, that's you the wisdom. And that's why it's called self discovery wisdom. Yes. Once you understand the wisdom, which is Gus, God, universe, spirit, energy, whatever you wish to call it. When you understand that wisdom that resonates with the heart and truth that goes to the spirit into action, your mind knows what it needs to know when it needs to know it. It knows how to use the knowledge. Yes. Right? Knowledge is, is just knowledge for knowledge's sake, until you have the wisdom to know how to use it. So the more in tuned we are with our wisdom, the more we actually know how to use that knowledge. And if we look at our gifted children, they're already tapped into that wisdom. Yeah. Let's help they're, them they're maintain more, that. Yeah, They're more intuitive by nature because they don't know any other way. Right. A lot of us have Until we broken. beat it out of them. <laughs> yes. We, we've gone through these institutionalization uh -huh. methods yeah. to where, like, they factory farm us <gasps> to be these yes. particular worker bees. Yes. Humanoids. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but but we're so much more than that. And I love a lot more than that. And yes. it's, we're doing ourselves a disservice. We're doing our children a disservice. Um, you know, it's, as I said, the people that I've interviewed through the years, like yourself, you, you have had your challenges, uh, not just your children, your own challenges with yourself, even discovering that you were on the spectrum afterwards, you kind of explained the difficulties that you had in growing up. Right. And so that means you can give yourself some credit for getting where you are, but also you can release a great deal of burden for feeling that you let someone down because you weren't what they wanted you to be. Right. You oh, became yeah. who you are meant to be. So your children have helped you honor who you are. Yes. I, I think that's one of one of the best things of having children is they're a little mirror yeah. um and and some people try to fight that uh flow trying to you know swim upstream but but they've just taught us so much between um you know being able to open our perspective mm -hmm. being able to communicate yeah. on different levels I mean, it's like um, the one saying, if if you can't explain it to a five-year-old, you don't actually know it. <laughs> yes. So, That's I mean, it's not it's not that you're dumbing things down, but right. that you're being able to communicate to someone based off what they know. So that that's the most important thing with connection with people is being able to attune to them, yes. to find their frequency, where your frequency yeah. is, and how you can flow together. And, and that's how we have our vibe tribe. Exactly. <laughs> my daughter, um, you know, because she's half Asian, she's uh, very different looking to my other two children. They're, they're all same father, but she's the petite one. And the, we don't look anywhere alike. But immediately people know we're mother and daughter because they say the same spirit. The same spirit yeah. signature, although I'm no longer that beautiful butterfly, you know, because I became linearized or, you know, beaten down into conformity, which I repel now. But my other son, when, um, again, doesn't look much like me, though people know, um, it's heart. You've got the same heart. And with my other daughter, uh, the one who works with people with brain injuries, um, it's the same logic. It's the same knowingness. And it's like... It, it's that signature of people, you know, don't, don't go by the looks, don't go by, you know, other things. What is the signature of that person? And that is what you're tapping into, that frequency, that signature, that connection. You know, you make connections with people like, you know, I never would have made a friend out of this person, but, right, we had so much in common and we just clicked. Right. right. That's why it's so much easier for children to make friends yes. versus adults, because as adults, we start getting all these ideas of what should be. And if they don't fit in this particular box, then we don't feel like they fit in our lives. And but children, children are just like, yeah. hey, 
you're here. Let's right. be friends. <laughs> and I don't care what color you are. I don't care right? what anything you are. I'm just connecting on a signature. We see it with the animal kingdom of how they support one another because it's all done by this energetic field. And, you know, racism is taught. All right, your children don't see the color. Oh, you're a different color. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, and that's it. Right? The, yeah. the, it's are they clicking with that child? Do they enjoy playing with that child? Do they giggle together? That's yeah. all they care about. You know, the racism and the hate and the division is taught by us adults, and that comes from our own insecurity of not being at home with whom we are. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So I, I struggled with bullying all through mm. my school years and, you know, kind of learning, you know, to to accept that these people had their own struggles that they didn't know how to deal with mm -hmm. appropriately and being able to love them. That That's the thing. You, you have to stay in in the frequency of love, love for yourself and love for others um, still being able to set those boundaries exactly but being able to still approach it in a, in a loving manner I think we also need to look at love as a gauge you know it starts here and goes all the way up the, yeah, the love we have for our children is right up you know there but when we say love people that have done us wrong it's a love of forgiveness and I wish you well yeah. But here's my boundary and I'm not going to accept any wrongdoing towards me. So it's not, oh, I'm going to love you to, you know, it's not that. It's a love of, I wish you to find love. I wish you to find that inner love. So yeah. therefore you won't go around hurting other people because you feel less than. Yeah, right? it's it's the idea of compassion. Yes. Compassionate living. Compassionate um, love. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That that that's um Another thing I, I really delved into for a while was uh, just just preaching about, you know, compassion mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to look at people, different perspectives. And, you know, you don't know what this person is going through. Yeah. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you think this person has it worse or not. That doesn't invalidate what you're going through. Yeah. Um, but but still being able to to accept and move on is is the big thing so many people get stuck dwelling yes. on on things um and and keeping that picture of perfection in their head that that they're not able to move on and that that's what you need to be able to do is Allow if, if you don't and yeah. release it and if you don't <laughs> it's going to eat you up and as i said i've just written my memoir but in a different format i've written it as, as individual stories that you know are you know not a linear thing and my daughter you know said to me mom you've just been way way too nice to dad he did a lot more damage to you i know he scarred you and you know i know that he did you wrong and i go but it's not where i am anymore you know, and so I'm not going to go down, you know, the the emotion of what was done. I will state what was done, but it's who I am today because of everything that's been done and what I chose to become that I am emphasizing. And I did go back and add a couple of things, but I'm not going, I'm, you know, somebody said to me, oh, I can't wait to hear all the juicy thing. And no, I'm not writing it as a titillation book of my pain for your pleasure. I'm writing it as, yes, these things happen to me. Yes, these are my obstacles, but this is how I use them to become who I am today yeah. and who I hope to be tomorrow. And I think that's the thing is uh, there isn't one single human being on this planet that hasn't gone through stuff. It's what do we do about it? And if you decide to hate someone because of what they did to you, that hate is on you, not on them. Right. Yes. That that's but, what they say with forgiveness. You're not yeah. forgiving them in the sense that you're condoning say, condoning yeah. what they've done, but you're releasing yes. that connection. Yes. So that they no longer are taking up space. Right. You're you're not giving them free rent in your head uh, or right. your heart anymore. You're no longer being the victim. <laughs> right? Yes. And a lot of yes. people choose to be the victim for several reasons. One they can keep blaming the other person for where they're at uh, to abstaining from wanting to do anything about it. 
Uh, three, liking the attention they get by being a victim. Yes, yes. And and it's it's easy to slip into that mode yes. and and start having like self-pity or especially if you have issues like depression and yeah. anxiety. Um, it's it's a slippery slope. And that you know, sometimes you need to allow yourself to have those feelings, but then set a time limit of okay, I'm gonna yes. give myself this amount of time to for my pity party <laughs> let loose <laughs> yes. and feel my feelings because yeah. my feelings are valid mm -hmm. but then i'm gonna do something about it right <laughs> there is um you know with victoria curry and i really want to connect you two together um she's a she has a podcast uh which is a children's podcast and there was this young man he was 12 at the time that interviewed me he's going to die before 18 because of a heart defect and he was just like so profound you know like just so together and I since learned the horrors of what's going on his mother forgot to sign his disability um, insurance thing so he no longer gets the medication he needs to survive he sleeps on the couch um, even for his birthday his 13th birthday everybody was out and nobody paid any attention to him he's 65 pounds Right. And all, and so my friend raised some money for him to get medication or to pay her rent so that he had a roof over his head. And all the mother did is, well, give me the money and moan about herself. Well, what about me? What about me? What about your dying son? Yeah. There's time for you. He doesn't yeah. have time. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like, you know, there is somebody who's the pity party. Look at me. And when he does pass, she will play it on. No, oh, woe is me. Right. Of course, that's yeah. the tendency of who she is. But in the meantime, you know, I've got a series coming out, the Forgotten Children series, and he's one of the forgotten ones. And it's mm -hmm. uh, who steps up for him. She's trying to, Victoria's trying to step up for him. She's trying to get him for the summer so she can fatten him up and look after him. Um, but it's like the advocacy for our children who are born to the wrong parents. And if we see it, we can't ignore it. We need to do something about it, which is not the pitchfork, folks, not no. the pitchfork, but it's going, you know, to the various societies where this child needs help. How do we help them without so yeah. much disruption? You know, it's not always about taking the child away from the mother, which in this case, I think it is, but it's not always about that because sometimes it's the mother is so, parent is so overwhelmed, they need the help in order to support the child. And let's put the judgment aside. Let's also look at how we can help people um, and not leave these children behind. Yes, that, that's why I, I try to really focus in on, on the self-care, because it's easy to get stuck in that ego trap of mm -hmm. victimization and, you know, just having your blinders on, seeing that one idea. Um, but but that just causes pain for yes. so many people and including the person doing it to themselves. Yeah. Um, and they might not realize it. Mm until later and then have such regret over that but it's it's kind of the oxygen mask theory yeah you do have to be able to take care of yourself so there's a certain amount of selfishness that is healthy as long as you you are also able to have compassion for yourself and for other pe people um and and see how things overlap and affect one another um but yes there's there's so many children in need um, that that's one thing between working for the state and different departments. I was actually in the depart the DFPS Department of Family and Protective Services for a couple months while I was going through a couple different promotions and oh my God, the back scenes of that, it's like mm. peeking behind the curtain. I know. There's just so many stories. I know. Like, Heartbreaking, I can't isn't it? Believe and that. in a country like America, which is meant to be, you know, the 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 freedom and opportunity and every and yet you've got this type of thing going on. Yes. Which yeah. But but that's again, you know, it's easier to train up a child than correct yeah. an adult. But yeah. we've got a lot of adults who weren't taken care of and then yes. we have that generational trauma. <sighs> and they um, and they unwillingly go and hurt the children they have because that's all they know i mean they always say well, how does an abused child 
become a, an abused parent when it's the pattern they know. And yeah. and it's unknowingly very often that they're doing it without realizing that they're doing it or they don't know any other better. I mean, we've got to change that cycle, change that pattern. Yes. I mean, it, it's like even the example of spanking people mm -hmm. being like, oh, I was spanked and I turned out okay. I'm like, yeah. you know, that's you're you're encouraging hitting. Yes. You're teaching them that the solution is violence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's just the breakdown of of the psychology of it and some people just can't wrap their heads around that they just they're they're too focused on other things but that's you know helping people open their eyes and to get outside their own ego yeah um, or their own pain uh, yeah yeah uh, you know it's um We've all got this thing called responsibility, uh, responsibility for our own choices, our own actions. And it may be clouded by what has happened to us. But at some point, we need to look at that and say, it happened to us. Can we make it happen for us in a way that it shows us, uh, you know, how we can survive this, how we can even thrive because of it. Um, but that's a choice. And there, it does take work. It does take work for you to put on yourself. And, and there's so many people that don't want to do that work. They just rather continue to blame um, and shame others rather than take on that responsibility of self and realize that pattern was imposed upon me and I need to change that pattern. Otherwise, it will be repeated. And I think one of the other things that's really evident now, and I think this is where a lot of our beautiful indigo autistic children are coming in, is the... Um, conscious compassion that is growing. Um, the consciousness has been raised up over the last few years. The universe is turning it up on us notch by notch by notch. And one of the things that's coming out of it is the compassion. And people realize, oh my God, I used to do that and I didn't I didn't know the effect that it was. No, don't punish yourself for it. You now know better and you now know not to do it. So what else can you do instead of that? And I think that's the the consciousness where compassionate consciousness is waking us up to change our ways just because it's been done doesn't mean it has to continue to be done. Just because you did it doesn't mean you have to persecute yourself. It's now what are you going to do differently? Yes. So, so much of my studies in uh, PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome mm -hmm. uh, disorder, um, and my own experiences have, you know, it's it's easy to get stuck and dwell on on yeah. things, um, but but you ha eventually have to use it as fuel. You, yes. you have to be able to take it and you know say I am forged through fire. Yes. And I am stronger for it. Exactly. And and now I can help <sighs> others do the same because they deserve to 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 get past those those issues that are weighing them down and and you know especially with with the parents their children deserve it mm. and it's okay if if you're not perfect no one yeah. is no and there is and no such thing as perfect perfect moments in life but there isn't overall perfection yes and and that's important to to teach children that yeah. for example I mean, people worry so much about like making sure their kids have all these specific experiences. What matters is the day to day, how you are able to flow with life, you know, how you're able to handle these different situations that come up, how you're able to grow and learn and, and show them through example. And that's what we try to do with our children is, you know, teach them we want them to communicate we want them to express themselves but we do want them to learn how to do it in appropriate ways putting other people's consideration in as well and learning compassion yes um and and that's that's the biggest thing is compassion for yourself and compassion for others um, i think if, if you have compassion for yourself you you understand the need for compassion for others you know, it's like, yes, you want to go and do it for other people, but it's the same thing if, if you want to find love, be the love, yeah. right? And it's, it's please heal thyself first, because in the healing of thyself, you have more ability to help others. 
It's not helping others at the depletion of you or the confusion of you. It is go in first and heal yourself inside because then automatically your vibration changes and your ability comes to back you up in helping others in whichever way you're meant to. Yes, you can't pour from an empty cup. Nope. Um. <laughs> it's air, but there's plenty of that around. <laughs> you know, yep. We want nectar. <laughs> yep, no, it's... um. There, there's just so much that that people are afraid of. There's so much fear, and and they get just so overwhelmed. And and it's important to be able to just break that down and just be like, this is where you start. Yeah. Just take that first step, and and you take the next step, and then you build momentum. And it's not always about motivation as much as it is just getting a routine in. Yeah. That you're that you can get comfortable with that a becomes flow. natural that you can mm -hmm. flow with, mm -hmm. and and then you've got momentum and and yeah. then you're making progress. The one step at a time. Yep. <laughs> right, and that's the thing is that I've mastered this step. I can take the next step more comfortably. I'm a bit wobbly on this step. What do I need to do to secure myself? Do you know what? I can actually take a stride here, mm -hmm. right? And so it, it is when you are more present with self and more conscious of where you are right now, you understand the importance of those steps. And it's not about the leap. You know, I always say the biggest leap of faith in life is your first step. Yes. That's, you know, getting started is the hardest part yeah. um, with, with everything. It's, it's new, it's different, mm. it's uncertain mm -hmm. and, you know, it's confusing and, you know, I don't know if it's, gonna work or not or or this or that all these fears but if if you can push past the fear and have the courage to try yeah. that's the thing is you know just just try see how it goes and then adjust course as needed but keep keep that momentum keep, yeah keep trying don't give up don't be afraid to ask for help yes it, yeah, whether you have a child on the spectrum or not, or whether you feel maybe you are not being diagnosed, maybe you're just having difficulty in life with adjusting to whatever bombardment is out there, ask for help. Not yeah. from somebody that is opinionated, well, no, you've got to do it this way and you've got to do it that way, but from somebody that you feel, I feel there's a reason why I do these shows. So people can listen to people like you, they can resonate gosh, she's telling my story. Uh, she's been in my position. You know, what did she do? How did she get out of it? I need to talk to her. I need her help. And that's the reason why I do these shows because there are a, over 3,000 of them here, but there's somebody always there that you, that will, you will resonate with, that, that you are meant to talk to. Wherever it's meant to go then is, is up to wherever it's meant to go, but that you will talk to that will help you navigate the skills and the tools and the support and the encouragement, that next phase of your life. But don't be afraid to ask for help. Yes, no, that's that's that first step is is being able to, you know, identify, mm. you know, that there is this thing and that it's okay. And then this is the step I'm going to do to connect mm -hmm. on it. And then just keep evaluating to see if you need to adjust course, if it's going well, if it's not, but just keep keep trying, just keep taking those steps. There is no diploma or degree at the end of it. You're, you're not doing this for brownie points or the gold star. You're not doing this to impress anyone else. You're doing it to be at home with yourself. And yes. with whether you have the, the differently able challenges or whether you have a differently able challenged child or person in your life, it is to know that at the end of the day, you can say, I've been my best, I've done my best, and I feel good with where I'm at. And if you don't, don't beat yourself up because today is another, tomorrow is another day. Nurture yourself through that night and then approach the next day with different enthusiasm. Yes, yes. And, and like you said, you know, finding someone who's been through what you've, mm. what you're going through, having someone who's already gone down that path um so you're not having to clear a path all on your own exactly you know, all those fawns through the rose bush <laughs> <laughs>
but it's it, it it's just invaluable to be able to have other people who can understand where you've been, what you're going through, what your hopes and aspirations and fears are, and and then being able to connect with them without the fear of judgment. Yeah. And, you know, let loose. You know, I've I I, I grieve for what could have been, but mm -hmm. I'm still you know proud and happy yeah. for how how they are, and and you know it's just that letting go of expectation. Yeah, we 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 just have to be able to attune to what what is real. Yeah, versus what what these ideas planted in our head are that that are less realistic. <laughs> I firmly believe that we're each and every one of us, you know, a beautiful gift, a lovely instrument that we need to know how to play. And we can play it as a soloist, but we're meant to come together as an orchestra. Uh, and when in strength and in harmony, we really can transcend our message out. But it's, I don't, you know, I always say the janitor is just as important as the CEO, because if that Sometimes place isn't more. clean, yeah, <laughs> because he set the stage. And yeah. when you walk into a place and it's clean, you know, your your mind is like it's clear and clean. Uh, when you talk to the, if you walk in and it's dirty, immediately it contaminates what you think of that company. So, you know, there are invisible people that we don't pay much attention to, but they're very pivotal or they're very important to our foundation of what we do. And I really don't care if you're in the orchestra, you're the, just the, the triangle or you're the soloist. Everybody is important. And it's... um don't compare or measure yourself against someone else be the instrument you were meant to be yes yes you've got to be true to yourself you yeah know, to thine own self be true exactly and, <laughs> yes and allow other people to be themselves too and yes and that's really kind of the identity crisis of our no. society yes trying to fit Imagine. this perceived consumeristic type <sighs> ideal that keeps being force fed to us um, versus just like tuning all that out and tuning in to who we really are and what we know is right in our soul. <laughs> Everything that society is pitching to you is all about sales. Somebody yeah. else making money off you. And when you go, I'm not for sale, all right? I am worth so much more than you can afford to buy. Uh, and you're willing to take that journey of your own enrichment and abundance, then you really know what it is that you have to contribute to this world. And it's enough. Don't compare. Don't compete. Just be. Be the beautiful, abundant person you are. And we look at our children that are differently abled and the challenges they face is aid them in navigating through their challenges, that they're safe, that they can grow, that they feel secure. All right, guide them, love them, uh, nurture them, and then let them be what they're meant to be. Yes, if if they're able to have that base level, um, that foundation yeah. of safety, security, love, and acceptance, you know, there it the possibilities are just limitless. Yeah, and you know, it might be still within a certain spectrum of of what they're capable of, but they're capable of more than most people realize I'm most incredibly talented are, yeah yes mo most people are more capable than even they realize that oh they are. <laughs> you know I'm, I can attest to that I mean the things that I have done that I never thought I could do uh, and it's because I had to and if if it meant something to me I had to learn how to do it and then when you do it you go I didn't know that was in me and like that's what's exciting is discovering things about yourself that you never allowed yourself to discover before because you listened to what other people thought of you and you went and lived your life on their, you know, opinion rather than your own abilities because you didn't allow those abilities to, to shine. So you started a company. So now um, you are platformed on 10xstrategyagency.com. And with your name, um, can you tell us more about that and what you're offering people um, in, um, in, in caring for our beautifully differently abled? So, so with that, um, like I said, I, I got to the point where my providers, my children's providers were starting to refer me to other parents um, and, and then COVID hit and everyone sheltered in and I did more online connecting with different groups there and just doing my own little rabbit hole studies and seeing what worked with our kids. Um, and 
then I came across this agency, the 10 X stages that, that helps uh, people learn some public speaking skills mm -hmm. um, and, and learn how to uh, make clear, concise communication points um, and, and kind of help formulate that more in, into uh, a strategized uh, process. And so with with that, um, I'm I'm attempting to to reach out to different places where I can speak and reach more people. Um, my, my goal is to reach um, one million caregivers of autistic children to help them achieve confidence in their decisions, reduce their stress and gain access to a streamlined path to success. Uh, Keep doing the podcast lab. You, you will, you'll do it. You'll do it. <laughs> Because we had no idea how many people listen or the impact that it has on them. But that's the beautiful thing about the ripple effect. You know, the, the first few ripples are just ripples. That four fifth ripple has just had a huge impact. Right. But we may never know. Uh, but something you've said or something you've, you've done, some, the, just the inspiration that begets the invitation, uh, and it sets somebody thinking or doing on a different level. So just keep on impacting a uh, lot more pod podcasts, do it TED Talks, and just, you know, yes, get out there. Let's, you know, speak to as many people that will listen, which is really important. So to find you, um, they go to where? Uh, that is the uh, 10... Uh, one zero, uh, spelled out in the numbers, uh, x stage agency dot com forward slash Rochelle dash Hadamenos. Can it's, you it's spell your easy. name, please, love, so people who are listening know how to spell it? Yes, yes, it's R A C H E L L E, um, and Hadamenos is H A D E M E N O S. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm working on trying to build out a, a separate website, but there's just so much involved in that, <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully it's, it's, it's coming soon, hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> yes. Yes. But for now that that's where they can find me or they can just, um, you know, fi find me on social media. I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, and I've they can email you other accounts but right. i don't use them much yes they can email me the the best um place to email me is hire rochelle at gmail.com so that's h-i-r-e-r-a-c-h-e-l-l-e -L -L -E at gmail.com and and i'm happy to to discuss any anything with anyone really um just just i i, I love helping people and um, I, I am offering coaching services um, at, at different levels for, for different people and different needs. Uh, so my, my ideal um, is, is to be able to coach someone for three or six months because it really takes time to, to get to know one another and to go through these processes uh, and, and really see the results. Um, it really kind of takes that three to six month time span. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the one so step at a time instead of just the huge big leap to the end, right? Yes. 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 More comprehensive. We, we, yes. We, we can set that goal. We can identify where you're at, where you want to be, and we can work on building steps to get you there. So you work primarily with caregivers, whether it be parents or whether it be caregivers of people um, across the spectrum. And, you know, we've got to understand that just like motherhood, we dive into it. But when we're looking at, uh, you know, differently abled, there are are different things we need to pay attention to. And if you are a caregiver, it's it's not it's not of the norm. So it's not mainstream. So there are many things that you may not know. There's so many different aspects to it, too. So there isn't a one size fits all. And that, uh, you know, learning how to be the best caregiver you can be by understanding that one step at a time, taking care of yourself, how to take care of others, how to recognize, you know, what to do or whom to even ask if something comes up, all of these things is that we don't think about. We just jump in and do it. Whereas if we had the strategy 
and the knowledge of how to do it that one step at a time it takes a great deal of burden off you because now you don't feel alone you have a strategy in order to approach it and that means you can serve whoever it is you're serving so much better yes and and that's the main thing i don't want anyone to feel like they're alone yeah. um there's there's resources out there they can be hard to find um to find just the right one for you but i promise you they exist and and we can get you there we we just need to be able to go through the process we need to take be willing steps. to go through the process <laughs> you know it's it's gain it everything in life is one foot at a time and sometimes it could be a stride or sometimes it can be a leap but you can't stop off with the leap you've got to put that one foot and when you when you're sure footed then you can start taking those strides but you've got to get to be sure footed and if you're thrown into something that is a little out of your comprehension or out of your comfort zone or you're feeling overwhelmed this is when you need the help and you're not just telling people what to do you're helping people to know how to navigate with certain steps and certain skills and certain support that they don't feel alone but they also feel they can cope with the situations because basically you're preparing them for that yes yes it's it's kind of like leveling up you know yeah. that there's you know, a, a lot of uh, fun ways to create analogies and like with video games, yeah. you know, sometimes my husband and I joke that, that we were given the hard setting for our children. Um, you know, other people have like God level setting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depending on the challenges they face. But it, it, it's it's just a matter of, of being being open to learning. Mm -hmm. um and and being open to to continual continual growing um so it's fi finding that frequency and mm -hmm. being able to adjust pivot as needed and and find the right tribe for you in the yes. moment <laughs> big one big one we aren't alone as i said if we want to join the orchestra we've got to know how to play our own instrument and that's important and that's what you're preparing people to do, you know, how to play their instrument and then which orchestra to join, where there is, you know, the respect of the gift that you're bringing to it and where you feel vibrationally, harmoniously that you can play together. And, there, you know, again, no one size fits all. Uh, and it's a, it's like who, who do you feel you can harmonize with in life? And that's what you're looking for, that harmony where that vibration can just beautifully flow and you feel that you are in control because you're allowing that flow to go. Yeah. You know when it's challenged, when it's not. You, you allow, allow, allow and not dictating because that dictation comes from a place of conditioning, from fear, from ego. And we know those are the things that stops us from actually growing and evolving. So and that, allow. And that's what causes a lot of the depression we see yes. in society right now. It's what one of my favorite quotes my mom taught me was um there comes a time when the 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 bud is uh more in more pain staying closed than it is to open yes and so that's the thing we have to allow ourselves to open to yeah. bloom yeah to to be able to uh you know go through the the cycles of life and and be open to the changes and in, in the flow of life. It's the old caterpillar thing, right? The caterpillar literally becomes mush yep. before it becomes the butterfly. And you, you can't make it. Yeah, it deconstruct. You have to <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know, you can't make it become the butterfly before it's got all of its stuff together and then it will be. And that's the same for us. You know, sometimes we do go to mush where we do have to deprogram, where we have to look at life, you know, as a blank slate and go, okay, whatever I paint on this canvas right now is my choice. And if I tune in and paint from there instead of the outside interpretation, uh, uh, I will become that butterfly I'm meant to be. So yep. allow, allow, allow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and accept. <laughs> accept and look at our children who are differently able. And what kind of gift are they? Because every child is a gift. And if we nurture that gift, we try and understand the message that they're teaching us and who they can influence and inspire. Uh, then that when we understand that the gift that they are and let's like make life better for them so that they can keep shining and being that beautiful full bloomed gift 
and that we yeah. are so anxiously wanting to be ourselves. So thank you so and much that... for sharing here today, love. Yep. Yeah? Thank, thank you. I, I just really appreciate what you're doing and the impact you've had. I'm, I'm just in awe of everything you've accomplished. And I, I love just going through your, your library. <laughs> That's There's a big one. so much to learn there. <laughs> that is the reason why I do this is the, it's kind of the, it's the database of wisdom from people who were willing to learn through their experience, uh, allow that experience to show them where they're meant to go. It's the best kind of knowledge in my book. The best kind of knowledge is the knowledge that's being gained through experiential wisdom. And uh, that is the most beautifully abundant knowledge that can be shared. So thank you for being a part of it. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you very much. Right back at you, love. Right back at you. Remember, folks, we're all differently abled in one way or the other. There's just some of them have got a label of spectrum this or spectrum that. But let's look at the gift who they really are. Let's nurture them for who they really are. And if you need the help, you need to actually understand. You need support and, and being, being, being that caregiver. Rochelle is here for you to help you on that journey because you're not meant to do it alone. You're not meant to know everything. And She's been through it. She's going through it. She's got the skills and the tools. Reach out and just do what you need to do in order to be the best version you can be of yourself so you can support whoever it is you're supporting through their differently abledness. Until next time, folks. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.